Chapter 43. Surprise. So, I just need to double check everyone is present. Chris, me, Rich points at himself. Leah, we're standing outside the school minibus and Rich is counting us all for what seems like the 10th time. But all I want to do is get going because the waiting around is making me nervous. We're all wearing our school blazers, which reminds me we are representing our school and that makes me feel even worse. Rebecca nudges me and shows me a blue teddy bear. It's our mascot, she whispers, to bring us luck. Think we need a minibus full of them, I say. She laughs. I'm glad Rebecca is here, but part of me wishes that Jake was too. I look across the car park towards the science block. This doesn't seem real. I'm used to being the kid in the classroom, watching the rugby or netball teams get on the minibus, not the one getting on it. When the rugby team wins, they announce it in assembly and Dan Wills, the captain, reads out a report of the match on stage. Mr Keats walks across the car park towards us, wearing a dark suit that I've only ever seen him wear at parents' evenings. Everyone here, Richard? He asks. Yes, says Rich. Then let's go. Mr Keats slides the door back. Rich gets in first and sits at the front. I get in line behind Tom, Chris and Leah, who smiles at me as we move forward. I force a smile back to be friendly, but from my reflection in the wing mirror, I can see I look as nervous as I feel. If it wasn't for Rebecca, today would be like going on school camp without any friends. She texted me last night to ask what the Bobby Fisher film was called, but I know it was really an excuse for her to check I would turn up today. It's like she knows I've lost confidence, like I feel as if I don't belong here, on the minibus, in this uniform. Rebecca nudges me. Go on, Felix, she says. Part of me wants to stay at school, but the other part of me makes me step forward onto the bus. Felix, Felix! I stop and turn around. Jake's running towards me, waving his arms in the air. Jake, I shout, what are you doing here? Yes, Rich pokes his head out of the door. What are you doing here? I'm, I'm, Jake tries to catch his breath while looking at me like he wants me to think of an answer. I'm, I'm Felix's coach, Jake blurts. Yes, I'm Felix's coach. He said I could come. What? Rich looks at me. Jake opens his eyes wider, like back me up, Felix but I'm so happy to see him that I can't stop myself laughing. Yeah, he's my coach, I say, smiling. I can't believe what Jake is saying, but I'm just glad he's here. Your coach? Rich turns to me. Yeah? Okay, so what does he do? Says Rich. Um, I carry his water. Jake holds up his water, his bottle of water, and I check that he doesn't get injured. I don't think so, says Rich. This is chess, not football. And besides, your name isn't on the list. Jake grabs Rich's pen. There, he says as he scrawls on the paper. It is now. Everything all right? Mr. Keats shouts from the driver's seat. Yes, except he's here. Rich snarls at Jake. Hi, sir. Jake beams. Thought you'd like some support? Well, it's appreciated, Jake, but did you get permission from your parents? Of course, says Jake. My mum wrote you a note. I try hard to stop myself laughing as Jake holds up a piece of paper. Just get on, Jake, says Mr Keats, waving the note away. We've got a long journey ahead. Great! Jake heads to the back of the minibus. He isn't a real coach, but it's great to have someone in my corner. I walk between the seats. Jake taps the one beside him. I glance at Rebecca. It's okay, she says. I don't mind. It's not okay because I promised I'd sit next to her, but I don't want to upset Jake. Do you mind if I sit with Rebecca? I say cautiously. I'm really glad you're here, but I need to concentrate. 
Jake looks at Rebecca, then at me. Of course, he says and smiles. You're the school champion, he adds loudly enough for Rich to hear. He sits down behind me. I take the seat next to Rebecca. She smiles, but I can see she's shivering. Are you cold? I ask. No, she forces a smile. Just nervous, aren't you? Yeah, just a bit. My jaw has been aching ever since I got up. It's adrenaline. Jake pokes his head between the seats. I get it when I play football. Jake, I'm sorry, but I said I need to concentrate. Oops, sorry Felix, zip. Jake pretends to seal his lips, then sits back in his seat. Rebecca glances at me like she's about to say something and I do the same to her. But as the minibus pulls away, I'm suddenly so nervous I want to pee. Mum and Dad tried to calm me as I left home. They wished me good luck and Mum gave me a comforting hug. But that hug is beginning to wear off. It's useless. I'm going to lose every game and let the team down. I don't care about Rich, but I do about everyone else. And now I know what it feels like to be good at something. I'm scared that someone or something will take that feeling away. Grandad, why did we even start doing this? Couldn't you have taught me something else, like Ludo, where all I have to do is pick up a counter and shake the dice? I look out of the window as the minibus stops at traffic lights. I could run for the door now, grab the handle, slide it back and jump out. I could do it. I could. Felix. I am thinking you need to stop this. I know, Grandad, but I can't help it. I need to get out. I'm going to look like such an idiot. Rebecca gives me a weird look. Who are you talking to? His Grandad. He's always doing that. Jake pokes his head between the seats again. It's a bit weird, but you get used to it. Jake, I yell. Sorry, only saying, well, don't. Shh. Rich turns around. We need to focus. See, I whisper, I told you, if you're going to do anything, help. You're supposed to be my coach. Okay, okay, keep your hair on, Felix. I'll think of something. I know. Here, he reaches through the gap. Chewing gum, I say. Well, I've got a bottle of Coke too. I would have brought snacks, but they gave us lunch. Ha! Rebecca turns around. So that's why you came? Yes, and a sport Felix, of course. I think it's only the players and the teachers, says Rebecca. That's okay, says Jake. I'll just get crisps and chocolate from the machines. My dad knows how to rock them so you don't have to... Jake, I snap. Stop talking. I'm supposed to be concentrating. We all are rich glowers. Okay, okay, Jake sits back. Keep your hair on. I lean back, bump my head against the seat rest. Dad told me it would take an hour to get to Cheltenham. That's how long I have to calm down. One hour to get ready for the most important event in my life. I wish Grandad was here to help. I close my eyes and think about what he would say if he was, but all I can think about is what he told me when I left his house last night. Let your mind be as clear as the sky and your heart as calm as the ocean. Okay, clear mind, calm heart. Nope, it's no good. My heart's still racing and I need to pee. Take deep breaths, nice deep breaths. Breathe out two seconds longer than you breathe in. I'm thinking this will increase the air in your lungs, the oxygen in your blood up into your brain. I'm thinking this will help you stay calm. I'm thinking this is best for you to concentrate. I take a deep breath, count to six, let it out, count to eight. I take another. Oh my God, no way. Not now, Jake, I gulp. But Felix, no. Ah, uh, I can't look. This is the worst thing. Worse than dreaming of going to school with no clothes on. I sigh. He's not going to shut up until I look. I open my eyes and turn around. What is it? Jake slid down so far, he's nearly on the floor. There, he says, pointing over the back of the seat. He's there. 
Who is? Your granddad. He's following us in the pink car.